I'd like to welcome everybody to, to Bible class tonight. It's been a long time since I've been able to do a Bible class or been at the church. I want to, first off, I want to thank everybody and, and uh, thank you for your prayers and your cards, your texts and calls. Uh, I'm doing much better. I uh, feel much better. I'm getting my energy back, uh, my strength, and uh, uh, other than my immune system is still low. Uh, the doctor wants me to still staying in for a while, and I am doing kind of what he says to do. I'm being positive, trying to be positive. And, um, but I am doing much better, and I want to thank everybody for your cards and, and prayers. Uh, God's really been good to me. God's been talking to me, dealing with me. And I do thank you for your, your prayers. That, uh, believe me, prayer uh, can change things. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you tonight about, uh, a subject. I'm going to talk to you about uh, being positive in a negative world. And I can tell you here lately, it's been hard for me to be positive. Uh, but that's something that God wants us to do is to, to keep our minds elevated and not think on negative things and be more positive. I know even when I was in the hospital, when I went in for several times in the hospital, I uh, didn't want to be there, but I tried to be positive. I tried to let my light shine. And I tell you, it made a difference. It made a difference to the people, it made a difference to me. Uh, and even when I left, I even had a lot of the nurses really even say how they appreciated me being nice to them. But, uh, and it, it was such a joy for them to take. They said some of them said I was one of their best patients and they enjoyed it. Uh, so we can be positive in a negative world. And our society today is uh, forcing us to be uh, negative. And that's kind of what uh, our society has pushed us to be. Everything the news, the TV, everything is negative. Um, and, uh, and goes along with that gossiping is also go, falls into that category as being complaining and gossiping and always negative. Um, I think um, uh, even the TV and the news constantly is just nothing but negative, negative, negative. And that's something that, you know, we have to push back. Uh, God wants us to be more positive and, and being negative and complaining and gossiping only destroys your joy. It destroys your joy that you have in your life. That's one thing that it does do. And I'm going to try to cover some scriptures tonight, some stories, and it won't be long. But I'm just give you some things that I think can help conquer uh, being negative and being around people that are negative. I'm sure we all have that situation. We, we've all been around people that are negative. So let's let's ask God tonight before we go into this to touch our mind. Remember the ones that are sick. Uh, so let's bow our heads and just say, Lord, help us, Jesus. Touch our minds tonight. Touch my mind, Lord, that, that this lesson could be beneficial, Lord, that it'll help somebody. Help me, Lord. Let's draw closer to you, Lord. Remember all the ones that are sick or in need, Lord. We ask you, Lord, in your name, Jesus. Amen, amen. I'd like to start off, too, uh, just reading a couple of scriptures out of Proverbs. Uh, and this is more of being gossiping, but I think gossiping falls in that category of complaining and and being negative. I think that falls in that category. And the first one I'd like to go to, and we all probably know the scriptures in Proverbs 18 and eight. And I'd like to read that to you. It says, the words of a tail bearer are as wombs and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. And that means they're gossiping. So there's somebody that gossips all the time, uh, you know, I've had people call me and tell me this or that. You know, the best thing to do is just avoid that situation. Just tell them you don't want to hear that. You're trying to, to be positive, but there's always somebody. Uh, you can have a great church service and somebody is always going to be negative and say, yeah, but it was should have been this or they should have did that. So um, we need to learn to. Yeah, there's a saying that says, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything. And that's a lot of times what we need to do. And it's hard. Sometimes it's hard for us to, to not say anything. But, but that's the best remedy is just not to say anything at all. And the next one I'd like to turn to is Proverbs 20. These are all right in a row and they all pretty much uh, fit in the same category. And it says, He that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets. Therefore meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. 
So, you know, a tail bear can flatter with his lips. They're always gossiping and talking about somebody else, usually never talking about their self or the problems that they have. It's always somebody else or complaining about, well, this didn't happen this way. It should have went this way. Uh, but they never do complain too much about their self. They always flatter their lips with somebody else. It's never them. And the last one in Proverbs, if you, just a quick little few scriptures here. Proverbs 26 and 20. You can go back and read some of these later. There's many, many more. 26 and 20 says, where no, where, where no wood is, the fire goeth out. So where there is no tail bearer, the strife ceases. So there it's talking about, you know, if you don't, if you're not stirring up trouble, you're not gossiping and you quit doing that, uh, then the fire goes out. There's not a problem. Uh, so that's kind of what he's telling us there to, to not say anything at all and just let, kind of let it die down. And uh, I know uh, first scripture I'd like to turn to another one is where Paul is talking uh, in Philippians. Uh, and, and if you would, would you turn to Philippians 2? We'll get into that a little bit. Philippians 2. This is something that God has been dealing with me on is uh, being more positive and and even when things go bad, you can be going through a trial or a problem or a test or anything, but it's how you take it, how you come out. Are you complaining about it? Are you are you trying to do the right thing? You're being positive. And that's something that God's really been dealing with me on. It's Proverbs, uh, let's see, Philippians, I'm sorry, Philippians 2.13. Okay, let's start here. It says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It says, Do all things without murmuring and disputings, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and a perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that, it may, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. So Paul is saying not to complain, not to argue, do all things without complaining and arguing. And that's hard to do. Uh, just take things right. But, you know, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to, to go through things and we're going through trials. And it's how, um, I don't know about you, but when you go through a trial, uh, I don't want to have to go through another trial that I didn't learn my lesson. I want to go through it and learn what God is showing me that I need to do. And that's a lot what I went through here lately. Um, I'll just tell you a little bit about my situation. When God, um, I knew when I went through this, God was trying to show me something. I had to go through some things. Um, I had to feel some things. Uh, I knew God was with me. But, you know, when you go through things like that and you take it right and you're positive about it and you try not to be negative and complain and gossip, you have a peace. God can give you a peace and a joy that you can't, explain. It's hard to even explain. I had such a peace. Um, I wasn't worried. I wasn't scared. I knew God was with me. But I worked on myself and, and tried to, to, to take it right and to do right. And that's what God wants us to do in this world. I mean, uh, it talks about a crooked and a perverse world we live in today. Lord have mercy that we live in a terrible world today uh, with all the drugs and shootings and killings in our city. And all over, I mean, it's an ungodly world we live in. And it's so easy to get our mind off of the Lord and on the sidetrack um, and get negative and start complaining and saying, Lord, why is all this happening? But, you know, we know that God's in control of this world. God's in control of the situation. So that's what we have to do. We have to take it. And it's the whole situation is taking the situation right and being positive and, and leaning and trusting in the Lord that he'll get you through that and not complain. Um, and I'm not going to get in this. We talk about Joseph a lot. And that's where I, I started. And if you want to read in Genesis, I think around 37, 38, and Genesis chapter 37, 38 in there, uh, Joseph talks about his, his story. And we talk about Joseph quite a bit. Uh, but Joseph, all he went through, his brother sold him uh, in Egypt. And then, and, you know, he was... Um, working for uh, Potiphar and he sold, his wife said he tried to, uh, to rape her and 
I mean, everything that he went through, uh, Joseph, um, he never, I looked at there and you read that, he never complained. He never complained, oh Lord, why are you doing this to me? Why is this happening to me? He never complained about that, but he took it right. And because he took it right, it says that God was with Joseph. And what he went through that, and it didn't happen overnight. That's a lot of things that we go through. We try to think that it's on our time frame, uh, that we can speed it up or we can do it, but it's always in God's time frame. And I think he was 17 years old, I believe, when he went into, when his uh, brother sold him. And I think he was in his 30s when um, he become under Pharaoh, governor of Pharaoh, Pharaoh. So that was a long period of time, but Joseph went through a lot of things, but I never, his story, if you read that story, go back and read Joseph, uh, he never complained about that. He always was positive and God was with him. God rewarded him for what he did. And uh, that's that's a wonderful story. If you have time that's around in Genesis, I don't wanna get through all that, but, but that's a very good story about Joseph being positive. But, uh, it also, you know, he showed him mercy in, in, with, with Joseph for the way he handled the situation. But another story I'd like to talk to you about is in uh, people that did complain, and that's the children of Israel. And I don't want to be like the children of Israel. that They started complaining and complaining and complaining. As soon as God brought them out of the, uh, Egypt, uh, you know they started complaining. That wasn't right. That wasn't right. Uh, so... You know that that um, uh, it's easy to, uh, I probably, you know, what worries me, if I was back in that day, I'd probably be one of them complaining as well. Uh, but I don't want to be like the children of Israel. And I like to start with that in a positive situation. If you go to Numbers, uh, if you turn to Numbers 13, and a good story here on Joshua and Caleb. We know these stories, but... Sometimes it's good for us to just refresh our memory. See, it's 13, we're gonna go uh, 13 and 25. A little bit of reading here, uh, kind of give you, you all know the background, but uh, I'll go on and read Numbers 11, or excuse me, Numbers 13, and we'll start at verse 25. It says, and they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And this is where Moses uh, sent the spies into the land. And verse 26 says, And they went and came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kiddush, and brought back word unto them and unto the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told, told him and said, We came into the land where thou so sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. So, they were positive in their, uh, what they were saying. The fruit was good. They were positive. So they went to Moses and said, here's the fruit and, and where you sent us at. So they were positive. They, had, they, they did have some positive. Then here it comes. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. And the Amalekites dwelt in the land of the south and the Hittites, sorry. The Jebusites, the Amor Amorites, dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. So here we go. They start out with a positive, and then they go right back with a negative. So that's kind of where we are. We know what God wants us to do a lot of times, but then we start talking ourselves out of it. We let our mind get a hold of us and start talking us into being negative again. And then verse 30, though, but Caleb still the people before Moses said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it out is a land that eateth up with inhabitants thereof, and all the people that, are, that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we see, we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which some of the uh, which come of the giants, and we are we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were we were in their sight. So 
Joshua had a different spirit, but the people started out positive, like I said. Then they started looking at all the negative, and uh, they forgot what God did for them. Just, just a little bit. God had brought them out of Egypt, brought them across the Red Sea, opened up the Red Sea, walked on the Red Sea. They went through all that, and their God, they had already forgot all that, what God had already done for them. And, you know, that's easy for us to do. There's so many things that God has done for us that we forget. Uh, and all of a sudden we start talking ourselves out of uh, being positive or what God wants us to do. And all of a sudden we start dwelling on the negative thoughts and, oh, God's not going to do this. God can't do that. But verse, uh, I'm going to start out here, verse um, 14. I'm just going to keep reading chapter 14. There's some good points in here. And it says, And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in the wilderness? So here they are complaining now. They wish they could have died in Egypt or in the wilderness. They had already forgot what all God has done for them. And well, for hath the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be prey. Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? So here they are wanting to go back into Egypt where they were slaves and all that they, then to, to do what God wanted them to do. And it says, and they said one another, let us make a captain and let us return back to Egypt. Then said Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before the assembly of the congregation of Israel. And that's a good verse right there. I think about poor Moses. Um, I know at one time Moses said, uh, Kill me, Lord. I, I can't bear all these people and all these, all this stuff happening. And you think about um, uh, people in the ministry and that, you know, what they faced and, and uh, what Moses faced here. Uh, he all the complaining. I mean, they fell on their faces, and I'm sure, you know, we do the same thing. You know, we we go to the ministry and ask for advice a lot of times, and, and they give us advice. And what do we do? Uh, we don't do what they say. We complain about it. Uh, so I can understand what Moses and Aaron felt like. Uh, it, it, you know, here they, they knew what God was doing for the people and the people turned against them. They wanted to go back to Egypt, back to, into, to being slaves. Then it said, verse 6, it says, And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jehovah, I guess is how you say it, which were of them that searched the land, they rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we passed through to search it, is an exceedingly good land. Now here's Joshua and Caleb. They have a different attitude. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into the land and give it us a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their, def their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. That's a good scripture. Verse 9, if you under I underline that, and the Lord is with us. God is with us as long as we're doing what God asks us to do. And we're doing everything we can. God is with us. Then it says, fear them not. But all the congregation bid them with stones. And the glory of the Lord appeared into the tabernacle of the congregation before the children of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, how long will these people provoke me? And how long will they err they believe me for all the signs which I have showed them? I will smite them with pestilence and disinherit them and will make thee a greater nation and mightier than they. So here we are, all that complaining that they did and, and, and what God had done there, God thought about just turning and smiting them. And, he, and he, even God uh, even said all the things and all the things that I promised them, all the things I've done for them. And I think God looks at us a lot of times too and thinks the same things. Here, look what all I've did for you. Now you're complaining, you're gossiping, uh, you're being negative and, and trying to uh, uh, undermine what I'm doing. Instead of relying on me and trusting me and having faith and being positive and taking it right and remembering what all the good that God's done for us, we can take all that and, and twist it around and make it all bad. But the key there um, was Josh and, and Caleb. And it even says... Um, I believe it says they had a different, um, it says, yes, uh, in verse 24, it says, But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him and had followed me fully, 
him will I bring into the land wherein he, he went, and his seed shall possess it. But Joshua and Caleb had a different spirit towards God, and they believed God. And God blessed them for that. Even brought them, they were the only two that made it out of that group uh, of and the children of Israel that made it into the promised land. And we know the story uh, about Joshua and Caleb. But, but, you know, we need that kind of a spirit where we believe God, we trust the Lord, uh, and we, we take things right. That's the key, uh, is we take things right. And, and try not to be around people that are gossiping or being negative. And if you do have that, work on it, because that's uh, gossip and, and negative is a bad habit. It's a very bad habit to get into, and it can destroy you. It can destroy your life, destroy your joy. It can destroy people. It, it can destroy a church. It can destroy many, many things. So uh, one other thing I'd like to get into, the next thing I'd like to talk on is uh, I would like to talk about how to conquer complaining. And the first thing I wrote down and talk about is admit there is a problem. Uh, if you are a constant complainer, you have a problem. We know that. It's not how God wants you to be. Remember, do all things without complaining and murmuring or arguing or disputing. Uh, just a lot of times uh, we have to go through things, whether it's a trial. A lot of times it's, we bring it on ourselves. We bring on a lot of our problems ourselves. And... Uh, we need to just deal with it. And if, if it's our problem and our fault, then we need to quit complaining about it and take it the right way. And one thing um, I would like to do this week, and, and it says, I wrote down, I said, but check yourself this week and see how much time you spend griping and complaining or gossiping. Uh, you know, the children of Israel complained as soon as they left Egypt. Uh and I'll give you a couple examples on that one, too. We'll go into Exodus a little bit. I like to touch on that. But this week, watch yourself and think about how many times. Try to keep track of how many times you're complaining. And when you go to think about something negative, think about something positive. Uh, get your Bible out. Start reading your Bible. Uh, start reading the Word of God. That's the one thing that can always touch your mind, change your mind. Pray. Pray. Uh, and if somebody does call you a lot of times and complain or gossip about something, change the subject. Just tell me you don't want to hear that, that you're, you're trying to change your ways, trying to be more positive in this world we live in. And a lot of times when you stop people dead in their tracks, you just tell them you don't want to hear it. A lot of times it makes them start thinking too, and then they change their thought. And they say, well, you know, my, maybe I need to be more like that, so... And pray for them. Pray for pray for people. And pray for our church. You know, pray for, uh, you know, a lot of times we complain about our church or uh, when things are in our church. But let's pray for our church. Uh, and always complain and come up with the suggestions. That's something I thought lately. Instead of complaining and griping about it, come up with some ideas or suggestions that would help. Um, whatever the, our services or chat or whatever in our, in our that we need in our services. Uh, do some, uh, give us some compliments. If you if you think of something that the Lord wants or been talking to you on, let let Brother Jesse know. Let us know that you know something maybe help us. Uh, we don't do everything right in the ministry. Doesn't do everything right all the time and make everything the right decision. But but we try. We're trying to do the right thing. And I'll give you some examples if you would turn to Exodus 14. I'm staying around a lot in the Old Testament because. Uh, a lot of the complaining children of Israel all through uh, when they left Egypt was complaining, complaining, complaining. But uh, turn to 14, Exodus 14. And I'll start with 9. And this is where they come out from the Red Sea. It says, The, uh, the Egyptian pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army overtook them and camped in them by the sea. Uh, we'll step down to, let's go to verse 11. It says, And they said unto Moses, These are the children, because the children of Israel, because they were no graves in Egypt, as thou taken us away to die in the wilderness, wherefore has thou dealt us with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone? 
that we may serve the Egyptians. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians that we should die in this wilderness. So here they are complaining, wanting to go back again. There, to, to, As soon as God was bringing them out of Egypt, wanting to go back and be in slaves again. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. And I underline this whole verse, this whole 13th verse. This is, Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. That's something hard to do. I underline that too. Hold your peace. That's something we need to do quite often. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me? Speak us unto the congregation of Israel that they go forward. So God there again was showing them. You know, he knew the beginning and the end. He knew that what was going to happen to the Egyptians. Uh, and there they were complaining, wanting to go back again into Egypt and be slaves. And God had already brought, told Moses what was going to happen and telling them to stand still. A lot of times that's what we have to do is stand still and let God handle the situation. Uh, we need to take our hands off of it and let God take it. And the next one is uh, Exodus 15, and we'll start. Um, we'll start at 22. And it says, "So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. So they did it, went out of the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water." So here they are, they're out in the wilderness with no water. And when they could when they come to the to Moriah, they could not drink of the waters of Moriah, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Moriah. And the people murmured against Moses again, saying, What shall we drink? Here they are again, complaining after God had done all that for them. Right back again, complaining, complaining. And Moses and he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree which when he had cast into the waters. The waters were made sweet. There he made he made them a statue of an ordinance there. And there he proved them. And he said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do, that's what I always write and underline my Bible, and will do, underline that, that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all of his statues, keep all his statues, I underline that, and will put none of these disease, I'll put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healed thee. And they came to Elam, where the, where the twelve wells of water, and, there, and three score and ten palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. So, the Lord said, I am the Lord that healed thee. And I underlined uh, several things there. You know, we will do what God asks us to do. And we'll keep his statutes and his commandments. He said, even you've heard Brother Jesse mention this quite a bit. And even what we're going through today with all these virus and sicknesses going around in this world. Uh, he said, he said, I'll even take the sicknesses away from you and diseases. God can put a hedge around us and protect us and keep us from all these diseases and going in the world. And I pray that every day that God will keep his hand on our church and our body and, and make sure that it keeps that none of us get sick or with this disease and this virus is going around. But it says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. So again, God is telling us, let's do what he says. Stay positive. Don't complain. I'll bring you through this. Just keep your eyes on me. Stand still. Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. I am the Lord that healeth thee. So we got to remember those things. And the next thing I like to talk on, on being positive, what I'm thinking about, uh, what are you saying to yourself? A lot of times I call it change your self-talk. Uh, think about what you're saying. What are you saying to yourself? What are you meditating on? Uh, and that's a, that's a key thing. A lot of times, uh, whether you're news, watching things, or just in general, your mind uh, can be negative. A lot of things can go through your mind. And 
a lot of times we have to change our self-talk, our thinking, to be more positive. Because some people, and I've been around people, and I know people, many, many people that are just negative in general. And at the first thing, you could say it's a nice day. And they're going to come out and say, yeah, but it's too hot. Uh, or it's cold outside or complaining about this or whatever. But uh, they're just naturally negative. And a lot of times we have to change our self-talk of what we're thinking on. Um, and a lot of things that we watch or do or listen to, music or whatever it could be, gives us a lot of negative in, uh, uh, in our minds that can change our minds or our thoughts. And we need to get rid of those kind of things in our mind. And one thing I thought of a good scripture in Colossians, if you would turn to Colossians 3. One of my favorite scriptures is in Colossians. Well, Colossians is a whole, the whole book is good, but Colossians 3. All right. <clears throat> if you would, I'm just going to go on. I'll just read. I might read a little bit of this here. It says, verse 1, 3 and 1 Colossians. It says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, or your mind on things above. Don't set them on the earth, but set your mind on things above. Think on positive things. Listen to, to Christian music, to tapes. Well, that's something I've been doing while I've had to be home here lately, is I, I've got to go back and listen to many, a lot of church services, a lot of different churches, and music, and uh, reading my Bible and studying and, and trying to set my mind, you know, I don't want to just sit here in the house and not be able to do anything and be negative and complain, but while I'm in this situation, I can, I can study, I can start thinking and get my mind right. And I can get closer to the Lord. I'm closer to the Lord now than I've been in many, many. Uh, before I went through this sickness, I'm closer now than I ever have been. Uh, and that's, I uh, appreciate God showing me things and talking to me. But I've tried to set my mind on things above. And we don't need to put them on this earth and think and dwell on what's happening. And uh, God's in control. Go to Daniel. We, we know all the stories of Daniel. Daniel 4, where he raises up men. He does what he wants. So I don't want to get in God's way. If he's moving, don't worry about it. God's in control. I've got enough problems to worry about. I'm going to let him worry about it. It says, for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ and God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Verse 5 says, mortify therefore the members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, idolatry, which is idolatry, for which things us the children of wrath cometh on the children of disobedience. In the time which ye should also walk some time when ye lived in them. But now you're also put off these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communications. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is a renewed, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So I'm going to stop there, but uh, that's a whole other subject. I'd like to get into that. I went through not too long ago on all these different uncleanliness. What does that mean? Fornication. That's a whole other topic. But if you get time, go into that and look at those things and then go down to look at the things that are good and what God's looking for and putting filthy communication out of our mouth and blasphemy. And that all falls right into negative and gossiping and all that and lying up to one another. And we need to put off this old man. And another one that we're going to turn to, uh, I'd like to go to, is Philippians. Philippians 4 and 5. These are all good, good uh, scriptures and good, good verses. And uh, I'll say first start with verse 5. It said, let your moderation be known unto all men, or your self-control or discipline be known unto all men. For the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. Ask God, pray about it. What's your will, Lord? And then let God handle it. Put it in his hands and then just be at peace about it and, and try to be positive. 
and go through it and take it the right way. And when you do that, you'll come out better. And then it says, verse 7, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Finally, this is one of my favorite scriptures here. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So he's telling us, think on things that are positive. Think on things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good, good report. Give good reports. Uh, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, give it to God. Think on these things. That's the best thing to do if you want to get yourself out of a bad attitude to start praising the Lord and thanking him for what he's done for you and all he's done and going to do for you. We might not even know what all the things that God has done for us, but we still need to thank him and praise him. And that'll get you out of a lot of times, that'll get you out of the neg negative attitude that you're in. And not only should we think positive thoughts, you should also speak positive words. Uh, lift people up. Don't tear them down. That's something that I thought that, you know, even in our church uh, services and people getting up, you know, lift them up. Um, it, it's hard when you're up anyway, a lot of times talking or in another church, but lift them up. Uh, 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 don't tear people down. Uh, that's, that's hard when you tear somebody down. And uh, our ministry, even lift them up, praise them, uh, thank them for you know for what they've done and uh, uh, what they're doing for uh, you know their uh, our, the ministry. You know, a lot of times don't get enough credit for what they do, but uh, that's a that's a heavy burden that they're on, and, and a lot of weight bears on their shoulders on on the ministry. But complain, you know, complaining is a bad habit, and it's a it's it's a habit, and it's a bad habit. And habits are only broken. I wrote this down. And this is a good. I thought a good point. Our bad habits are only broken by replacing it with a positive speaking. And uh, one thing I thought of is um, in, in Second Timothy. If you would turn to Second Timothy, um, being positive, uh, speaking positive is the only way you're going to get rid of a negative. Being negative. And lifting people up. It's easy to tear people down and being critical. Uh, but a lot of times you need to turn the mirror and look at yourself and see that that you know we all have a lot of work to do on us, and we shouldn't be complaining about anybody. We should be lifting our brother up because we lift our brother up. We're there with them. Uh, if you would turn us to Timothy, Second Timothy, and we're going to start chapter two. Um, I'll start at fifteen. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane, profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. So we know that he's saying, get away from gossiping and talking and speaking bad, because they will only increase to more ungodliness. And if you would turn over to Ephesians 4, another good um, scripture, Ephesians 4. Uh, 4 and 20, to see, yeah, 4 and 22. It says, verse 22, I'll start. There's many more other scriptures in here, but time-wise, but uh, these are just some of the ones I thought of. Verse 22, it says, That you put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which is after God is created in the righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speaking, every man uh, wherefore putting away lying speaking every man truth with his neighbor for we are members one of another be angry and sin not let not the sun go down upon your wrath 
neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that ye may have, uh, that ye, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceedeth out of your mouth, but that which is good to use of edifying, that ye may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and glamour and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted. Boy, sometimes it's hard to do being kind. And, but, you know, we're supposed to be kind, tender hearted, have mercy. Um, that's one thing I appreciate about this body. You know, we need to show more mercy. Um, and God's give us mercy and uh you know, we need to extend that mercy to other people. And I'd rather have somebody more merciful to me, me being more merciful to somebody than be hard and and angry and, and and not forgive that person. But God, he's telling us to be kind, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. You know, God's forgiven us for all that we've done. You know, we need to, to forgive our brother and be and lift them up and... and uh, we need to, to do a better job of that a lot of times. And then we all heard, like I said it before, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. <clears throat> it's better just to not say anything than be critical or gossip or complain. But I put, uh, I said, I wrote something down. I said, replace your criticism and complaints. Replace them with compliments. I'll say it again. Replace your criticism and your complaints with compliments. Now try doing that, and, and instead of when you get ready to complain about something or be negative and you want to complain about it, replace it with a compliment and say something good uh, and, and see how that changes things. And, and watch what you do this week. Take, pay attention to what you say and what you're, you know, if you're complaining a lot this week. And try to make a habit of that to, to, to change, change your, your thoughts and your process and be more positive. And I wrote down uh, another thing on this. It says, take responsibility for your own life. That's something that we like to blame everybody else. And I put down complaining is just an attempt to blame other people for the problem. And, you know, we can do that. A lot of times we can complain, but most, a lot of time the problem is us. We, we have a lot to do with the problem. It's us. And if you have brought on the problem, if brought the problem on, you need to take the responsibility for it. And I thought about it. Go all the way back. The man has always been like that. Go back to the Garden of Eden. Adam in the garden blamed Eve. Uh, he Then after he blamed Eve, then he blamed God for creating the woman. Uh, man is always... Uh, even today, you look at our politicians or anybody, they, if they get in trouble or getting something happens, they always complain it's somebody else's fault. And we went all the way back to the very beginning of time, man complained, complained. It was always somebody else, but we didn't take responsibility uh, for our own self, our own, our own ways. And I'd like for you to turn to Galatians real quick. Um, one of my final scriptures here, Galatians 6, we all know this, <clears throat> now I'm going to start at verse 7, it says, be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap, for he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. I'll stop there, but uh, just remember, you know, what you're sowing is what you reap. If you complain and, and gripe, and you're being negative all the time, uh, you're sowing, that's what you're sowing, neg negativity. And that's what you're going to get back, negativity. But if you sow being positive and you and you... Uh, take your situation right and don't complain and try to take it positive. And if you're going through a, an issue, I know exactly what it's like to go through a trial and, and test here lately. I've really 
uh, have more of a feeling and uh, understanding for shut-ins. I never realized, uh, you know, being in the house all the time or can't go anywhere, um, it's it works on your mind, and you you have to stay positive. You have to do things that uplift your mind. And I have a lot more sympathy for people that's in pain, uh, the sickness, and going through things because we never know what we're going to go through. We might be healthy and uh, be in uh, great shape. Uh, I never thought I was going to go through this, but we never know what's around the corner. Our bodies are fragile. Uh, and we never know what's going to ha happen to our bodies. But uh, I do know taking it right and being positive, and that was my whole subject tonight, is, is being positive. God is really trying to work on us today as uh, all this negativity that we have in our world, society in general, is negative. It doesn't matter where you go, tune in, the TV, radio, or whatever, it's negative. Everything is very negative, um, and uh, if you're not careful, it's going to creep in and creep into our church. Uh, it'll creep into us and get us complaining, and when we start looking at all the bad stuff going on, all the negative, but we got to remember God is in control. Uh, God is in control of the situation. He's in control of this earth, um, and if you're going through a trial or a test, uh, God can bring you out of that. He can make you positive. And if you can get, trust me, a lot of people I've heard them say, well, I just don't know what to do. But you can get close to the Lord when you're in a trial. I went through uh, what I went through and I have been close to the Lord. I felt his spirit. I felt the Holy Ghost. I felt a, a covering and a closeness to the Lord. And the pa I've had a peace that passes under no understanding at all. I don't even understand the peace that I feel. But uh, I feel that, and my Holy Ghost has been stirred up. And and this, uh, even being by myself in this house, I can feel the Holy Ghost, and I let that go. I try not. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I'll be a. You get when I get out of this, I'm going to be a beacon and a light and a banner for you, and I'll be a mega horn for you, Lord, to tell you what you can do. And uh, the Lord's really worked on me, and I thought. Um, that was one thing I wanted to talk about is, is, is being positive because in the world we live today, it, it's so negative. And God is wanting us to be positive and look to him and realize he's the one that we got to trust. He's the one that's in charge. And it, we we got to get our minds off of that and set our minds on our goal of what are we striving for in this life. And it's not what we get here in this world. It's what he, our eternal goal is. And that's what God, uh, we got to remember, God's not worried about this body that we're living in now. He's worried about our future body. And that's what he's wanting us to do. And um, I don't want to so, like I said, I want to so positive. Uh, but the next thing I had is accept responsibility for your own life and choices that you make. A lot of times, like I said, we make bad choices we need to be the one to take responsible for them and not blame somebody else. But take the, if you made a bad choice, just take it and, and try to do the best you can and keep a positive attitude. The changes that are going to take place are because of the decisions you choose. And I'll say it again, the changes that, that are going to take place are because of the decisions you choose. So what decisions we choose to do, whatever we take a bad attitude or whatever wrong decision we take, um, that's the decision that's going to happen. And I wrote this down as there's three kinds of people in this life. There's accusers, excusers, and choosers. And I'll say those again. There's three kinds of people in life. There's accusers, excusers, and choosers, and I'm going to tell you what they mean. Accusers are always going around saying it's your fault. You know people like that, and there's there's many many people that are accusers. They're always going around saying it's somebody else's fault. It's never their fault. Uh, but I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be an accuser. And the next person, next kind of person, is an excuser. E x c u s e r s. Excusers. They say, I'm a product of my environment. It's not really my fault. And I'll say that again. I'm a product of my environment. 
is not really my fault. So they want to blame somebody else all the time. And it's, it's the situation I'm in. Uh, it's the family I'm in. It's whatever the job I'm in. That's the way it makes me that way. It's just my environment. And then last, there's choose the chooser. Chooser. That's what I want. They accept responsibility for their own decisions. Let it be a chooser. Develop an attitude of gratitude. A chooser, I'll say it again, they accept the responsibility for their own decisions. And so let us be a chooser and we can have a develop an attitude of gratitude. That's what I'd like to do, have an attitude of gratitude. And I'd like to close with this last scripture. It's in 1 Thessalonians. If you would turn to 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 5. We'll start at verse uh, 5, verse 16. Five, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. It says, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I'm going to read this again. I think these are good. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. That don't mean 24 hours a day, but that's something I do a lot. Pray, pray. As soon as you get up in the morning, pray. Drop to your knees, thank God, and pray through the day. Pray God will give you a, a better outlook on life and more positive thoughts. And, you know, when you do that, you start your day out praying, on your knees praying, your day gets much better as it goes along. Verse 18, in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved, blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll stop here. Verse 24. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. And I'm going to read that again. Get this in your mind. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. God is faithful, isn't he? A lot of times we're not faithful and, uh, you know, we, uh, I, I'm ashamed a lot of times and things that I've, you know, I could have done a lot better and trusted more in the Lord. Uh, but God is faithful and no matter what you're going through or trial or test, uh, God can take you through it because he's faithful. And if he says it, he'll do it. Uh, so I hope tonight that you've enjoyed this. Um, Something been on my heart. I could go into a lot more detail. Uh, there's a lot more scriptures, but uh, these are just some of the highlights. Uh, we might talk again on it some other time, but I thought you know, the world we live in today, especially uh, with everything going on in our world, and if we're not careful, it'll creep in the church and negative, and and uh, it'll creep in and things. Sin creeps in your churches and uh, get, gets a hold of things. And we, we got to push that back and get it out of our church and push negative back and, and being more positive and relying more on the Lord and trusting him because I believe we're coming down to a day and soon is going to be here on our doorstep where that's all we're going to have is the Lord is trusting in him and believing in him. So uh, I admonish you tonight. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting out in service again uh, soon. Uh, and I'm looking forward to being with you all. I thank you for your prayers and cards and letters and texts. I'm feeling much better. God's been good to me, uh, blessing me, talking to me. And uh, uh, I tell you, I went through, uh, I wouldn't change what I went through for anything. What I've, uh, it's been hard, but I'll tell you, God has really worked something in my life. And, and when I get back, I, I'd definitely like to share my testimony and talk about few things that God's been talking to me on, uh, and, and hopefully that'll help you. So I hope you enjoyed this tonight. 
Uh, enjoy the rest of your night, and uh, God bless you, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.